Hey guys, if your Redmi or Poco phone is still running Android 11, 12 or 13, I've got good news for you. You can upgrade straight to Android 16 right now without waiting for any official update. Yes, you heard that right. In this video, I'll show you step by step how to install Android 16 on any Redmi or Poco phone without a PC, without TWRP and even without root access. But before we begin, make sure your bootloader is unlocked. If it's still locked, I have a separate video where I explain how to unlock it safely. Watch that first, then come back here. Alright, now let's get started. So for this video, I'm using the POCO F4, which is currently running Android 14. And today we're going to install Android 16 on it. But don't worry, no matter which Redmi or POCO phone you are using, this method works on all devices running Android 10 or higher. Alright, let's first download the Android 16 ROM file. First, install the Treble Info app from the description link and open it. Inside the app, tap on Browse Images. This will show you a list of custom ROMs that are compatible with your device. Here you will see the Android 16 ROM file. Go ahead and download the Android 16 custom ROM directly on your device. Now the first step in installing Android 16 is to enable developer options. To do that, open your settings app and then about phone. Now find OS version and tap on it 7 times until you see a message, you are now a developer. Once that's done, go back to the settings menu and then additional settings. Here look for developer options and open it. Here, as you can see, my bootloader is already unlocked. So make sure yours is unlocked too before continuing. Next, scroll down a bit and look for USB debugging. Turn this on as well. Now let's wait until the Android 16 file finishes downloading. Once the file is downloaded, move this file to another Android phone. I'm using a Pixel 6a as the second device, but you can use any Android phone. So here is the Android 16 file extracted as well. Also install the Bugjigger app from the Play Store, which acts as an ADB and fast boot tool directly on your phone. Now you'll also need a type C to C cable to connect the two phones. This lets the host phone send commands to the target, just like a PC would. As soon as you connect the phones, you'll see a USB debugging permission pop up on your main device. Just tap allow to grant access. And there we go. My phone is now connected in Bugjigger. As you can see, it shows Munch, which is the code name for this Poco phone. Now tap on reboot bootloader button and your device will restart and boot into bootloader mode. Let's wait a moment until it loads. Alright, the phone is now in fast boot mode. Next, click on this button to open the console. To confirm that the device is detected, type the command fast boot devices. And yes, if you see a serial number, that means your device is successfully connected. Next, run this command fast boot get var slot count to check if your device supports two slots or a single slot. As you can see, it shows slot count 2. That means this device uses A slash B slots, which is important for flashing the ROM correctly. Next, run this command to check your current active slot. Here it shows A, which means the phone is currently running on slot A. If it showed B, that would mean the phone is running on slot B instead. Now, if the previous commands gave you a get var variable not found error, that simply means your device is single slot. Nothing to worry about, just keep that in mind. Next, it's time to boot into fastboot D mode. So run this command, fastboot reboot, fastboot. But not all devices support fastboot D. So after running the command, if your phone just reboots back into the system, it means your device doesn't support fastboot D. In that case, you can continue flashing everything in normal fastboot mode. Since my device does support fastboot D, it booted right into it. After entering fastboot D, the phone may disconnect. So make sure to connect it again in Bookjeeker. Once that's done, it's time to flash the Android 16 ROM. So run this command, fastboot flash system and select the Android 16 ROM file. Let me quickly select it here. Keep in mind, the ROM file is large, so it may take some time to load. Just be patient and don't disconnect your device. Once it is selected, simply run this to install Android 16 on your Redmi or Poco phone. 
And there we go, the flashing has started. Since my current slot is A, the ROM is being installed directly into slot A. The installation may take around 5 to 6 minutes, so just wait patiently and don't disconnect anything. Alright, the ROM is now fully flashed and as you can see it says finished. Now the next step is to run this command fastboot-w. This will format all the data on your device, giving you a clean installation of Android 16 ROM. In my case, this command gave me an error. If the same happens to you, don't worry. Instead, just run these two commands one after the other. Fastboot erase user data and fastboot erase metadata. This basically does the same thing. It wipes the data and prepares your phone for a clean boot into Android 16. Now, if you are fastboot D mode, run this command fastboot reboot bootloader to boot into normal fastboot mode. And now it's time to flash the VB meta file with verification disabled. This step makes sure your phone won't run into verification errors when booting the custom ROM. Once VB meta is flashed, go ahead and reboot your device by fastboot reboot. Your phone will now restart and the first boot may take a little longer than usual. That's completely normal. I'll just fast forward this part for you. And there we go. We are now successfully booted into Android 16. Let's also confirm it in the settings. And yes, as you can see, the phone is now running Android 16. So that's how you can install Android 16 on your Xiaomi device and everything is working smoothly here. You can use apps, check the UI, explore features, just like your regular Android phone. And that's it. We've successfully installed Android 16 on our Poco phone without using a PC, without TWRP, and even without even root access. Now you can enjoy a clean, fast, and bloat-free Android experience. If this step-by-step -step guide helped you, don't forget to hit that like button. And please consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps a lot. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one.